WBC has granted 168-pound Canelo Alvarez permission to fight cruiserweight champion Junior Macabu Ilunga, whom from this point on I shall simply refer to as Macabu. And yes, you heard me correctly, 200-pound cruiserweight title. So before I go into any other further conversations about this potential opponent for Mr. Alvarez, there's one thing that came to mind. It's a simple question. Who is Mr. Macaboo? Who has he fought? What has he done and accomplished in the boxing world? It's quite obviously he's the cruiserweight champion at the present time. So I decided to box wreck Mr. McAdoo, start collecting some data on my own. I'm curious about this guy and why he was chosen specifically for this task. So let's take a look at his box wreck and um, maybe we can formulate a bit about Mr. McAdoo. All right, so quick sweep of his box wreck page reveals several things. Let's start with his last loss. It would appear he lost to a very noteworthy name in the game by Mr. Tony Bellew. Scrolling down, nice string of victories I see here, and his first pro debut fight he seemed to have lost. No big, this happens sometimes, but um, overall his resume does look good. Only thing that concerns me here, he's never fought in America. Now, I'm not saying that you have to fight in America to be a good boxer, but I, I think you understand what I'm saying. The fight with Tony Bellew, as far as I'm concerned, was his only fight against uh, a known, well, a more known common opponent in the boxing world, in Mr. Tony Bellew. This was a great fight, but a short fight. And once again... It gives us a little insight into Mr. Macaboo. Why does it give us insight? Well, it gives me great insight because although he had previous wins, this was his first real challenge as far as a known competitive professional boxing opponent. Macaboo was able to drop Mr. Bellew with a straight left in the closing seconds of the first round. It was a clean punch. I wouldn't say it was a devastating punch. Uh, Bellew did not appear to be detached from his consciousness, but nevertheless, he was capable of dropping Mr. Bellew with a straight left in the closing seconds of the first round. Taking a detailed look at the knockdown, as you can see, Bellew was a bit irresponsible with his defense at the time that punch was thrown. Not to take anything away from Mr. McAboo, because from my point of view, it appears to be a very clean, straight left, executed at the most perfect time. Here we see Mr. Bellew picking up the pace in the third round. Mr. McAboo opting to sit on the ropes and take the beating, not demonstrating any positive defense at all. Moving right along, here we see Mr. Macaboo warming up with his coach in his dressing room on a mitts pre-fight. He looks every bit of a cruiserweight. Good size, good solid muscles, he fits the bill in the looks department. We can see that he's a southpaw. I cannot guarantee he's a southpaw by birth, but he chooses a southpaw stance. I don't think being a southpaw guarantees you a win, but if you know how to use this stance, it could give you a slight advantage. I believe his size and potential strength should and could be a problem for Mr. Alvarez. I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that Mr. McAboo will and or might be able to 
take the heavy punches from Canelo Alvarez due to his size. Which leads to the next question. Will Mr. Alvarez be able to hold up and withstand the impact from this larger human being? I guess that's one of the main questions that I'll be dying to find an answer to. I'm not sure of uh, Mr. Macaboo's chances of winning this fight against Mr. Alvarez. I'm pretty sure he was picked for a specific reason and it has nothing to do with his box rec record. He fits the bill and the need of the Alvarez camp for their next fight to make a statement in the boxing world. I will give Mr. McAboo a puncher's chance and that's going to be based on his size and his strength and his ability to box slightly. I haven't seen this guy or followed his career most of what I'm saying is based on my uh, minimal research and video clips I've seen of him. If I was in a position to be his advisor or even his trainer, my advice and or training would greatly, and I mean extremely greatly, be focused on his defense. He would need a very solid defense to fight Canelo, even with his size and potential strength advantages. I believe if this fight was to come to fruition, Mr. McAboo, I've all already given him a puncher's chance, basically meaning he potentially could land a punch that changes the tide and the outcome of the fight. I mean, hell man, every boxer has a puncher's chance until the fight's over. But on this particular matchup, he's fighting Canelo Alvarez, who is structurally sound and also considered pound for pound the best fighter in the world at this point in time. I'm going to flip this over to Mr. Alvarez. We've gotten Mr. McAboo out the way for right now. Mr. Alvarez, pound for pound, best in the world, has decided to move, transition to an extremely distant weight class from the ones he campaigned at. Why is this? Are there no one else worthy in the weight classes that he campaigned at to fight that would produce a fan-friendly fight? I think we all know there are some boxers still there and it appears that Mr. Alvarez has no interest in fighting these boxers for whatever the reasons are. Could this end up becoming a case of the proverbial cherry picking gone wrong? That's yet to be seen. Like I said, at this point in time in the game, I'm going to give Mr. McAboo a puncher's chance, which, if you understand boxing, isn't much, but he still has a chance. I took the time to attempt to find the true definition of the term ducking when used in boxing. As we know, we all accuse boxers of ducking each other in a normal sense, not wanting to fight the other fighter for whatever reasons, most likely fair losing. But there is a truer definition of the term ducking when pertaining to boxing, and without quoting it word for word, it simply states that when a boxer that campaigns in said weight class or classes, but chooses to move up, grotesquely move up, in a very different weight class, that is usually the sign of ducking. Anyway.